Good morning, and welcome to Christ Temple Cathedral St. Louis Virtual Worship Service. Our pastor is Bishop Lindsey Jones. Our mission is to be passionate about loving God, following Christ, and impacting the world. Our service will include one song selection, the preach word by Bishop Jones, and closing remarks with song. Thank you. Enjoy the service.
blessings on you today. And I would like to invite your attention to the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 18, where I will read in your hearing verses one through six from the New King James translation of God's word, which says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something at the wheel and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Verse five says, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Lord, break me. Lord, break me. And it was A.W. Tozer who said that it is doubtful that God can bless a man greatly until he hurts him deeply. It is doubtful that God can bless a man greatly until he hurts him deeply. And I believe and suspect that newly inaugurated President Joseph R. Biden Jr would agree with Tozer. For before Biden left Delaware last week, he spoke at the Major Joseph R. Biden III National Guard Reserve Center, which is named after his son, Bo, who died in 2015 at the age of 46. And there was Biden fighting back tears. As he said, ladies and gentlemen, I only have one regret. Referring to his son and he said that he is not here. You see, though President Biden was on his way to Washington, D.C., which many of us are trusting and even praying that he would be used by God greatly, those tears reflected the broken heart of a man who knows what it's like to be hurt deeply. And this morning, I want to speak to you from the subject again, Lord, break me. And the message today is this, God's blessings come in our lives often after God's greatest breaking. And we come today to the second of three dangerous prayers in our five message series entitled Dangerous Praying. And we have reached day 14 of our 21 days in 2021 to break through to God. And here in this text, God tells Jeremiah, that he has a word to speak to him for the nation Israel. And so what God does, God sends Jeremiah to watch a potter working at his potter's wheel with claim. First, when it comes to praying the prayer, Lord, break me, understand that we are made by God. God created us 
for a purpose. And God not only created us for a purpose, God created us for his glory. Would you notice in verse three, again, verse three says this. Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something. And the first thing that Jeremiah notices is how the clay is made. The clay is going to be a direct creation of the potter. And the potter is going to directly create a vessel, which is a reminder to you and a reminder to me that we are made by God. This verse tells us about us. In Isaiah chapter 64, verse eight, that major prophet, like this major prophet, uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah 60, uh, Isaiah in chapter 64, verse eight, he says, but now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the claim and you are our potter and all we are the work of your hand. And uh, this verse makes it crystal clear that when it comes to you and when it comes to me is that God is the potter. We are the claim. Even in Genesis uh, uh, chapter two, that passage, when God was created mankind, the Bible tells us that God formed mankind from the dust of the earth. And all of these words made, these words making, these words are forming, they all remind us and remind me today. And I want you to know that you are no accident. You are here by direct creation of God. You did not evolve from amoeba nor monkeys, but rather we were created by the masterful hand of God. And even on last week, I, I reminded us that God made you and God made me and God don't make no junk. But yet we live in times that people uh, want us to think that we evolved and we were not created by God and in God's sight. Uh, kind of reminds me of, and if I could remind you of that uh, a little girl who asked her, her mother how the human race got started. Well, the mother told her how God created Adam and Eve. She turned to Genesis and read to her. Later, the girl uh, went to ask her dad the same question, and he said, we evolved from monkeys. She came back and asked her mother why her dad had a different story. Well, this was her mother's response. She said, well, I told you about my side of the family, and your father told you about his side of the family. Well, my friends, uh, you and I, we're created by God. We're created for God. And there's something about who made us, uh, even when it comes to making something and manufacturing something, the manufacturer or the maker is usually the source of its value and worth. For instance, the only reason why we often shell out unbelievable bucks for something, whether it is for jeans or jelly beans, is because of the maker, because of the manufacturer, because of whose name is on it. And so when it comes to our walk with God, and the prayer, Lord, break me, we need to realize we are made by God. And God made us for a purpose, and God made us for his glory. But apparently, while Jeremiah was looking, 
The story takes a tragic turn. The clay becomes marred in God's hands, not marred by God's hands, but marred in God's hands. And uh, so second, when it comes to the prayer, Lord, break me, we are not only made by God, but I want you to see we are marred. That is, though we are made in God's image, we do have a fallen nature. Uh, see verse four, verse four says, and the vessel that he made was marred in the hand of the potter. You see, uh, something again tragically happened that caused the clay to be marred in the hand of the potter. It is not the lack of skill on the part of the potter, but there is a flaw in the clay. It may be that there's a bubble in the clay that is causing complication. Or it may be a clod or a lump of some kind that is unyielding to the hand of the potter. But whatever it is, it left the clay marred in the hands of the potter. This word marred is a very interesting word in the original language. It refers to that which is damaged, that which is spoiled, or that which is flawed, or that which is blemished by the result of injury or rough wear, that which is corrupted or that which is ruin. And friends, yes, our lives are sovereignly in God's hands. But though we are sovereignly in God's hands, marring and uh, flaws have happened and have taken place in our lives. Matter of fact, the story of the human race is that original scene in the Garden of Eden has left us flawed, has left us fragile, has left us finite. Matter of fact, if there's any doubt, Psalm 51 verse five reminds us where David prayed, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceived me. And then in Romans 3.23, the word of God says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And all that original sin hasn't done to us from the get-go, other things have happened in some of our lives that have left us flawed, that have left us blemished, uh, that have less, left us damaged on the inside, regardless of whether it shows up on the outside. For instance, it could be that uh, somebody significant in your life, uh, when you were young, uh, told you that you won't amount to nothing, and you've grown up with that recorded in your mind, and that record continues to spin day in and day out. It could be that uh, maybe you were abused or mistreated earlier in your life. And though the physical scars have healed long ago, the emotional scars, the mental scars are still there and no amount of makeup, no amount of plastic surgery can heal your broken heart or your broken mind. And what happens is when things happen early in our lives, in those formative years, it has a way of leaving us maimed and marred. When it comes to our self-esteem, it will leave us crippled in our personality. There is something about when something has happened in the past, but it's still messing with us us in the present. And so all that original sin hasn't done to the human race. So often there have been incidents that have left us marred in the master's hand. 
And so, whether again the unredeemed sin nature of someone has misused or abused us, though we are made in God's image, we have a fallen nature. So first we are made by God. Third, uh, second, we are marred though we are made in God's image, which third brings us to the molding. We are molded. For what God does, God reshapes us through pain and brokenness. Because would you look at the second part of verse four? The second verse, the second part of verse four says, so he, referring to the potter, made it again into another vessel. Yes, the bad news today is that we are made in the image of God. You know, we are flawed by sin issues in life. But there's some good news today. And the good news is that the potter doesn't throw away the marred claim and then just dig out new clay. What the potter does, the potter begins to we rework the clay. The potter begins to look past the current flaws and the current faults and begins to create something new. You see, brothers and sisters today, God, loves us as we are because he created us, but he loves us too much to leave us as we are, which brings us and brings Jeremiah to the central feature of this potter's house. It's not only uh, the house itself, but here in the middle of the house is a wheel on top of another wheel with a spindle between it that connects the two. And there is the potter seated between those two wheels and the clay is placed on the upper wheel with the lower wheel. The potter is taking his foot and moving those wheels and his eyes are looking intently at the clay and with skillful hands. What the potter does in order to reshape, in order to remold, in order to deal uh, with the flaws and to deal uh, 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 with the fragile issues, the wheel begins to produce friction. You see, as the wheel spins and as the pressure is applied, the form of clay takes shape into the vessel. If although and even as the potter applies pressure and turns the wheel and the turns the wheel and applies pressure, what God does is the pressure turns the wheel and the turning of the wheel applies pressure. What God does in our lives, God reshapes and God molds you and he molds me through the various twists and turns and pressures and problems of life. Even as that wheel turns in that vessel, each 
turn uh, brings about pressure and each pressure brings about a change. The invisible hands of God are at work in your life and at work in my life in unusual ways. It is through the pressures of life. It is through the problems of life that the pulling and the shaping and the pounding and the rolling out the clay and working with precise wisdom that only God can see in our lives. What God does is God has a way of arranging the circumstances of our life in accordance with his will and works in the routines of our life. Matter of fact, can I remind you of what the apostle Paul says? The apostle Paul reminds us in Romans chapter eight, verse eight, Romans chapter eight, verse eight declares that and we know that all things, not just some things, but all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are called according to, watch this, what? His purpose. And so God knows how to arrange the circumstances of our life to remold us and to remake us. Oh, when I begin to consider more and more how God uses the pains and the problems of life to break us in order to remold and remake us. I am reminded that it was the enraptured Samuel Rutherford who said in the midst of very painful trials and heartaches, he said, praise God for the hammer, the file, in the furnace, the hammer molds us, the file sharpens us, and the fire tempers us. And then he went on to explain even more. He says the hammer is a useful tool, but the nail, if it had feelings and intelligence, could present another side of the story. For the nail knows the hammer only as an opponent, a brutal, merciless enemy who lives to pound it into submission, to beat it down out of sight and clinch it into place. That's the nail's view of a hammer. And it is accurate except for one thing. The nail forgets that both it and the hammer are servants of the same workmen. Let the nail but remember that the hammer is held by the workmen and then all resentment toward it would disappear. Not only is there the hammer, but there is the file, which is more painful still for its business is to bite into the soft metal, scraping and eating away the edges until it has shaped the metal to its will. Yet the file has in truth no will in the matter, but serves another master as the metal also does. It is the master, not the file, that determines how much shall be eaten away. And then there is not only the hammer, there is not only the file, but there is worst of all the furnace. You see the furnace is ruthless and savage and it leaps at every combustible thing that enters it and never relaxes its fury till it has reduced it all to shapeless ashes. All that refuses to burn is melted to a mass of helpless matter. But when everything is melted down, that will melt and everything is burned away. Eventually, the furnace calms down and rests from its destructive fury. At which point, Dr. Charles Swindoll, in his own unique way, 
he helps you and he helps me begin to better understand the story. And he raises these questions. He says heartaches and disappointments are like the hammer, the file, and the firmness. They come in all shapes and all sizes. They come in the form of unfulfilled romances, lingering illnesses, and untimely deaths. They come in the form of unachieved goals in life. It may be a broken home or a broken marriage. It may be a severed friendship or a wayward and rebellious child. It may be a personal medical report that advises immediate surgery. It may be a failing grade at school, or it may simply be depression and discouragement that won't go away to say nothing about a habit that you cannot break. Oh, you may be a nail as it were today, this began to resent the blows of the hammer-like circumstances in your life. Or you may be on the brink of despair, thinking you cannot bear another day of heartache that has you down. But I declare today, God knows what he's doing. God is the master. And God, I, may I remind you, that God's eye is on the clock. His hand is on the thermostat or the dial of the furnace. God knows how much we can bear. God knows how long we can bear it. And the longer we let God have his way in our lives, the more we begin to become like him. Again, let me be clear and state it again. God loves you. Yes, he does. God loves me. Yes, he does. But he also loves us too much to leave us as we are. And therefore, this prayer, Lord, break me. You need to understand, it's not to indicate that God needs my permission or God needs your permission to work in and work on our lives through the hammer, through the file, and with the furnace of circumstances of life. The issue is not permission, but I declare it is about willingness. You see, God will work in our lives one way or the other. But see, it makes all the difference in the world. Yes, it does. Whether God is working with a pliable, malleable, flexible lump of clay, or is God working with a hardened, inflexible, rebellious heart? May I remind you, you see, did you know the same sun that softens butter is the same sun that hardens clay. And uh, sometimes our resistance only worsens the breaking experience. And so be comforted today by the fact that God knows how much we can bear and how long we can bear him. And so when it comes to this awesome, when it comes to this bold, when it comes to this daring prayer, Lord, break me. We are made by God. We are marred by life in God's hands. But we are molded by the circumstances of life and leads us to the ultimate good news today. Not only are we made, not only are we marred, not only are we molded, but ultimately God is at work to remake us. We are remade. Look if you would, look, look, look if you would. 
It says, when I refer to we are remade, friends, God uses us more greatly after we have suffered deeply. Verse 4. Verse 4 says this, chapter 18, verse 4. It says, so he, still referring to the potter, made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to me. Oh, the amplified version of the same verse says, so he made it over, reworking it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. You see, marred vessels, when they are molded by the master potter, they are remade into something new. And the, watch this now, and the something new is always better than it was before. It is better after the breaking than it was before the breaking. It is more usable after the breaking than it was before the breaking. And uh, although the clay has no value by itself, oh, the clay, yes it can, the clay can become far more greater and far more valuable. Oh, when I think about being better after breaking than before, it was the apostle Peter in first Peter chapter five of verse 10, where Peter begins to proclaim, may the grace of God be upon you. And then this awesome dynamic phrase there says that after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish and strengthen and settle you. In that phrase, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect. That word make, Peter was a fisherman. In that word, make you perfect, it is the idea of a fishing net that has broken, but after it is mended and put back together, it is a stronger net after the mending than it was before the breaking. And Peter reminds us is that when we go through breaking and stretching and challenging times in life, we serve a God, yes we do, who specializes in, he's able to use us more greatly after we have suffered deeply. It was the apostle Paul who said, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, we can ask the thing. And I want you to know that when it comes to God being able to use us more greatly after we have suffered deeply, he's able to still do that which exceeds our greatest imagination. And that is why what God wants to do in our lives, he wants to make us better. And the good news is, this is the good news. I want you to know that no matter what you're going through, God is at work in your life. And he's at work in your life to make you better, not bitter. He's at work in your life to set you up, not set you back. God is at work in your life to redeem you and restore you and not ruin and destroy you. I close with this. Uh, one day, there was a lady by the name of Adelaide Pollard. 
and she was wishing to go to Africa as a missionary. But she found herself incapable to raise the needed money to fund the journey. She became very disheartened. And maybe today, God knows if you're disheartened and discouraged. But she became very disheartened and discouraged and she visited a prayer ceremony and she heard a woman say this. She says, she heard the woman say, it really doesn't matter what you do with this Lord. Just have your way with our lives. Those words encourage Pollard and she pondered the story from the potter here in Jeremiah 18 chapter uh, verse 3 in what Adelaide Pollard did she went home that evening and she wrote out four stanzas to what would become have thine own way and maybe you will pray along with me these words that she wrote that day have thine own way Lord have thine own way. You are the potter. I am the claim. Mold me and make me after thy will while I am yielded, waiting and still. And then the next verse says, Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord. Wash me just now as in thy presence. Humbly, I bow. Would you bow your head with me at this time? And as I pray to the Lord, where is God speaking to you for you to submit to his will? Would you pray, Lord, have thine own way. Have thine own way. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after your will while I am waiting humbly and still. God wants to bless your life, though you may be going through brokenness in life. May the blessings of God be upon you. I trust whether you've received him as your personal savior or you've been willing to like the clay to submit yourself to God's working in your life in tough times. May God continue to bless you in heaven. Smile upon you is my prayer. This is Deacon Alonzo Richardson, and we would like to say thank you for joining our virtual worship service. Please visit us at www.ctcstlouis.org for the latest information. If you have prayer requests, if you would like to give your life to the Lord, or even join our ministries, please email us at ChristTempleSTL at gmail.com. Please also follow our social media pages and also subscribe to this YouTube page and click the notification bell to the right and click all so you will be notified when the latest video comes out. We will also like to provide different ways to give your offering through electronic giving. If you'd like to send your offering, please send it to Christ Temple Cathedral, 4301 Page Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Once again, we say thank you for joining us we pray God's blessing on your life. Thank you. Have a great week.